Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on derivatives of exponential functions. So the derivative of, an, of a natural base exponential function, so our e to the x, in words, is itself times the derivative of its power. So we, we use the chain rule. So here's our most basic one. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So that there's not, when it's as, as basic as it gets, it's a nice one. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But when it gets more complicated, so the exponential function, or the derivative of the exponential function is itself times the derivative of its power. Okay, so right here we're saying here's the exponential function. The derivative of it is itself right there, so just copied and pasted. And then here's that power. There's the derivative of the power. And we could even put that in parentheses too to help. So that's often how I look at it without even doing a full uh, chain rule scenario. Okay, so we'll, we'll show it both ways, but um, I think in words it can be very powerful. All right, so let's, let's see a handful of these. Okay, so this first one is ready to go. Okay, so good to go. Let's let's do it. So f prime of x. Now this is just the old power rule. So let's write it the longer way too, just to show the full power rule. So seven and then the derivative of x to the 12. 12 comes to the front. X minus one from the power to get 11. Okay, so terms like that aren't going anywhere. So we'll we'll just continue doing our power rule on those forever. And then the next one we have an eight just hanging out. And then we're doing the derivative of e to the x. Well, that, that's this first one. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Just like always, if you have a constant times a variable part, the constant's just waiting for the derivative to come in. And then afterwards, it would multiply, just like it did in this first uh, term. OK, and so we did the derivative. And so I'm just going to clean it up. 7 times 12 is 84. And then x to the 11 minus 8, we don't need those brackets anymore, e to the x. Okay, there's our derivative. Okay, so the second one. The second one's ready to go as well. So we've got, let's write it like this. We've got dy dx. So I'm doing my derivative in blue. Now, this is an exponential function right here. The 8's just hanging out. So there's the 8. Now, if we're doing our derivative, let's let's do a u substitution on this. Okay, so our u would be 4x. So our, we're doing the chain rule. And then our derivative, let's do the u prime notation would be 4. Okay, so what we currently have is like y equals e to the u. So I'm just changing it to not be tr full function notation. And then we could say, okay, y prime would be, so the derivative of an exponential is itself times the derivative of its power, so u prime. And then we could plug those in. So we said e to the 4x, and then u prime is 4. Okay, so that, that's doing it the long way. So that is our answer for this part in the bracket. However, again, let's, let's just break it down in words. I'm saying the derivative of an exponential function is itself, so there it is right away, and then we look at the power times the derivative of the power. So the derivative is 4x, or the, the power is 4x, the derivative of 4x is 4. Okay, so if, we, if you like this side scratch work, I mean, that's fine. I think just trying to break it down into words, though, can save a lot of time with these problems, and it might make it smoother uh, the more practice you get. Okay, this term, they're trying to trick you, that's a constant. So it's e to the fifth. So e, as a reminder, e is about 2.71. So it's like pi. So it is its own number. So if I have e to a number, that's still a number to a number. So this, this is just a constant. This whole thing's a constant. So that means its derivative is zero. Okay, so these rules, the derivative of the natural exponential function is when we have variable exponential functions e to the x, or e to something with x in it. 
Okay, so careful of those. Okay, and then after that, we, we have our answer. Let's clean it up. This a to nat 4 would multiply, so we'd have 32, and then e to the 4x. Okay, so there's our derivative there. Okay, let's see what else we got. Let's try these two as well. Okay, so all the other rules are, are going to be around. So this, this one is a product. So notice you do have x times e to the negative 5x. So that means we will do the product rule. Okay, and then you can use whichever letters you want to use. I'm going to use u and v just to get it set up. So g prime of x with my product rule, I think, oh, just copy uv plus uv and then put a prime on u, put a prime on v. Make sure they alternate. All right, now let's get it going and, and sub these in. Okay, so u prime, well, the derivative of x is 1. And then v, we could just rewrite in, so e to the negative 5x. And then plus, u is still just x, so x, parentheses, parentheses. Now v prime, okay, so I'm looking at this, I see, oh, it's an exponential function. I know the derivative of an exponential function is itself, so instantly I just rewrite the exponential function that I currently have, but then I, I remember, oh, also times it by the derivative of the power. So the power is currently negative 5x, the derivative of that then is negative 5. Okay, so every, every time, so in, in words, itself, and then derivative of its power. Okay, so that way we don't need to chain, set up the chain rule to the side. We, we did it. It's just it's in a, one smoother motion. Okay, and then let's, let's clean this up. So we've got, I'm going to go back to black ink. Okay, so the derivative was in blue. Okay, so the first term, 1 times e to the negative 5x is e to the negative 5x. And then this negative 5 and this plus 1, there's a 1 right there. The positive 1 times negative 5 would be minus 5x e to the negative 5x. Now, this might be an answer. However, what they usually do is factor. So if there's multiple terms with e to the negative 5x in it, or e to whatever, we, we would want to factor. So we're going to take that out. So we have g prime of x is equal to, let's even put it in parentheses in the green. So I'm taking it out. And then now I'm setting it up with the rest of the terms. So we took the whole e to the negative 5x out of this first term. So that means that we would be left with 1 because there, there's a 1 also there as a, as a coefficient. So 1's left over. And then there's a minus. We took all of e to the negative 5x out as well. It took it all the way to the front. So we're left with just 5x. So 1 minus 5x is left over in the parentheses. There we go. OK, so that's how we can do. So often we factor. If it's a product rule with e to, to whatever, often it factors. So, so keep an eye out for that. OK, this next one. So number four is, the, is a quotient. So that means we need to do the quotient rule. OK, so I like to set up the quotient rule. Let's do it. And they use t. That's fine. We've got v prime of t. Again, I think high and low. High, low. And then I like to set it all the way up. OK, so the quotient rule is low d high minus high d low all over the low low or low squared. So there's the equation. And then now let's plug those in. OK, so the low function is e to the 3t squared. And then the derivative of the high, so we can, well, I think we can see this just right here without doing side work. Um, it's a power rule. It would be just 2t. And then minus the high function, t squared minus 1. And then now we need the derivative of the low. All right, so I'm going to underline it. Here's our low function. It's an exponential function. 
again, the derivative of an exponential function is itself. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite itself, e to the 3t squared. And then I would say, all right, don't forget, put the derivative of that power as a multiplier right after. Okay, so I think I'll use that parentheses like that. There we go. Okay, so 3t squared's derivative would be 6t. Okay, so there's that substitution. And then the low part gets squared, so it'd be e to the 3t squared squared. All right, so it looks like that. Okay, and then let's clean up the top. Okay, so back to, so that, that was the calculus, and then now it's simplify. Okay, so I've got my big old fraction. All right, so let's let's see how this simplifies out. So we have, in our first term, I'm just rearranging. So I'm going to put the 2t first, and then e to the 3t squared. Over here in our second term, this, this minus will distribute into these two terms. And then this is just a single term because it's all multiplication. This also will distribute into these two terms. So it's two distributing at once. Okay, so that means when this minus distributes, we'd have minus t squared. And then let's put this in parentheses. Then the e to the 3t squared and 6t multiplies it. And then still distributing the negative to the negative 1 would make that plus 1. And then the e to the 3t squared times 6t also multiplies it. Oop, that's, that should just be e, not 3. Okay, so then it's e to the 3t squared squared. Okay, so that, that's how it starts to look. And then what we're doing, kind of like what we did with the very first term, I'm just going to rearrange. Um, I'm going to say, well, let's highlight. I'm going to say this 6t and this t squared, we can rewrite. So v prime of t is, let's get a big fraction again. So 2t e to the 3t squared. And then minus, okay, so 6t cubed. And then e to the 3t squared. And then similar with the second, or the last term, I mean the third term, uh, 6t and, and 1, we could just say is 6t and, and write it in the front. So we have uh, 6t e to the 3t squared. And then still over e to the 3t squared squared. Okay, so the quotient rule is always, always a little nastier than the product rule. Um, let's keep it going. Okay, so a couple more steps. Here, now we have some things that look strange, but I'm going to change it to this green. Uh, these two terms are like terms. So notice they're, they're t and e to the 3t squared are in common in both. So that means we, should, we would be able to add 2 and 6 and then put the t e to the t, e to the 3t squared with it. Okay, so 2 and 6 is 8, and then attach the t e to the 3t squared, and then still minus 6t cubed e to the 3t squared over e to the 3t squared squared. Okay, so a lot of simplifying. Now, kind of like what happened in the product rule, we're going to factor. Okay, so often with e to whatever, there, there's going to be something in common. And notice there's actually something in common in, in all parts of each term. So 8 and 6 have a 2 in common. Uh, t and t cubed have a t in common. And then this one, e to the 3t squared and e to the 3t squared are in common as well. So we can factor a pretty strange greatest common factor out of those two terms. Okay, so I, I tried to code it by different lengths of, or different thicknesses of underlines. Okay, so 8 and 6, we said those have a common 2. t and t cubed have a common t. And then all of e to the 3t squared 
is taken out. And then now let's go back and make our adjustments to those factors. Okay, so we took a two out of eight, or eight divided by two, we'd be left with four. We took all of T out. Okay, so all of that's gone, check. And then we took all of E to the three T squared out. So that, that's out two. Okay, so that means we're left with just four and then minus. All right, so the six, we said we took a two out of it. So six divided by two is three. Taking a T out of T cubed would be T squared. And then we took all of E to the three T squared out. Okay, so, and then when we double check, foil it, two times four, let me do another check mark, two times four is eight. And then T E to the three T squared still attached, good. And then for our second term, two times negative three is negative six, uh-huh. T times T squared is T cubed, yep. And then E to the three T squared is attached, yep. Okay, so it shows we factored it correctly. Now down below, I'm gonna rewrite it out. So remember that when you square something, so like x squared is the same thing as x times x. So that follows with this rule to the denominator, that e to the 3t squared squared is the same thing as e to the 3t squared times itself. And the reason I wanted to rewrite it like that is because I have a product in the numerator that has an e to the 3t squared in it, which means I can cancel it out with one of those e to the 3t squareds down below. And then so now we have our final answer. I ran out of room vertically. I'm going to put our final answer over here. We're left with our big fraction, but just 2t parentheses, 4 minus 3t squared up top, and then e to the 3t squared down below. So we are able to simplify it a little bit to get our final answer like that. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so that one took that one took a while. The last one, number four. Okay, so chain rule can be nasty like it always is. All right, but be be careful, be patient. Okay, the main thing though that's new. Okay, so notice this problem even here. One two steps of derivative, and then afterwards it's just a bunch of simplifying. The main thing with our new thing, the derivative, is is right here. The derivative of an exponential function is itself times the derivative of its power. Okay, so uh, every time. Okay, so that that's it. Um, let's take a pause. There's some other uh, other problems after this, but uh, take a break. If you do have questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.